welcome on behalf of department of petroleum engineering uh, parul institute of technology to this webinar series we every month uh, are organizing the petroleum department is organizing webinars those are related to the petroleum industry petroleum exploration uh, through the industry leaders industry experts so in this series we have today the former deputy director of geological survey of india mr rajiv shrivastava he has extensively worked in this system and he has immense knowledge and a huge experience of more than 25 years in this field so he'll be delivering a lecture on, on sediment provenance studies in hydrocarbon exploration that how sediments have uh, what is the source of sediments in hydrocarbons uh, so far so i without wasting any time i request uh, rajiv sir to begin his seminar please sir thank you dr ok and uh, i really i thankful i am thankful to you to call me for this lecture and all to all my young friends who are listening or rather witnessing or rather viewing this uh, slide show or my lecture because 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 of you people only i have learned so many things while i was going through to prepare this lecture though i was uh, uh, keenly involved in uh, geological investigations of my department that is geological survey of india in my younger days up to middle level after that you know you are interested with so many other different responsibilities as you become senior but uh, anyway my first love was geology which is started uh, right uh, in the year 1971 since 1971 and i was actively involved in uh, field work till in 1995 after that of course i became in a supervisory uh, position so i had to carry out so many other responsibilities also today i will start my lecture which is uh, of course very important or rather very interesting uh, uh, in the field of uh, hydrocarbon exploration that is sediment provenance studies in hydrocarbon exploration i have given here uh, two diagrams on the left and right side of my opening page uh one you are you are already aware and other one is uh, is the different heavy mineral uh, assemblage which we find in our sediments to study carry out these studies it is one of those studies through which we carry out uh, uh, carry out our hydrocarbon exploration provenance is a french word which came from a, uh, which came from uh, which means from where it has come the origin or uh, in one way you can say uh, earliest known history the beginning of something this is all uh, mean the same thing provenance in geology is reconstruction of origin of sediments now you are dealing with the sediments sediments are very important in hydrocarbon exploration as you all know this our mother earth is a very dynamic planet and all rocks are subjected to Uh, uh rock cycles which are mainly there are three rock cycles that is one of them is sedimentary other is metamorphic and third one is igneous rocks exposed to the surface are broken down into sediments as you know uh, different uh, this uh, uh, agencies are always ero eroding the uh, rocks which are exposed to the surface or under the water even and which are expected to provide a evidence for the original history of their parent source rock this leads to ultimate goal of provenance studies to investigate the characteristic of source area by analyzing the composition and texture of the sediments i will keep on telling you so many times the provenance so please uh, right from the beginning i have cleared the how the definition has come now i will show you a very schematic or rather poor sketch of what is happening in our dynamic mother earth which is a, such a huge thing which is not possible to show in a single uh, sketch so now here i have shown uh, the three layers rather that way and how the whole process takes in one sketch here there is a mother thing which is magma from where everything has come that is hiran garbha that is what we call in sanskrit to our primordial earth this 
magma comes out in many forms sometimes in in the form of extrusive rock others are in just intrusive and other in in just a plutonic form which remains inside the surface and out of this erosion of these things uh, through the uh, rains snow even gravity sometimes cast you know cast topography that is also there is a erosion taking place there and it all comes down through the river and all the water system to a sloping side and forms a sedimentary rock if you say from here it from higher higher point to it goes to the lower point it get deposited in some basin or depression and where due to diagenesis and after that metamorphism it, it converts it changes the mineral form even and becomes a meta metamorphic rock and metamorphic rock again due to plate tectonics and the plates going under they again uh, syntactic uh, takes place and again they form the part of a magma and sometimes the magma also goes into and uh, get metamorphosed because of all those changes which are taking place under the those pressure and temp temperature conditions and they change they change into a different form of rock and then again they melt so it is a continuous process continuous cycle going on and the uplift takes place again the uplift takes place and then again the, the, these things are broken down by the different uh, eroding agencies and then again it goes back to <laughs> basin and the cycle keeps on going since the earth has formed provenance finds its maximum use in the study of sedimentary petrology it is a, a, a i think most of, of my young friends know what is petrology it is a study of rocks in in a, it is a small part of geology it is a small discipline of uh, but very important discipline of geology so within that petrology we study the sedimentary part of this petrology the provenance studies involve the following aspect is four aspects are there which which we study the source for knowing the provenance of the area we, uh, we study the source the particle what makes up the rock the erosion and the transport mechanism that moves the particle from source area to the depositional site the deposition depositional setting and the depositional processes responsible for the sedimentation sedimentation of the particle the depositional environment and fourth one is the physical and chemical condition of the burying burial environment and the diagenetic changes that occurs in siliclastic because i have used this word siliclastic is the all rocks which are, uh, are not chemical oh this um, i mean uh, calcareous it is only non calcareous part of that sediment which i am discussing here during the burial and the uplift in exploration stages for the hydrocarbon provenance studies can enhance the stand understanding because what we want to know through provenance to understand the reservoir distribution and reservoir quality which is our main aim to carry out through this provenance studies these will affect the chances of success of exploration project because you know a huge amount of money is invested for the exploration of hydrocarbons so we find a, a mechanism or a process or a tool so that our exploration project become a success in development stage the mineralogical and chemical techniques are widely used to estimate the reservoir zonation and correlation of stratigraphy here again the stratigraphy uh, word comes you know most of you may be knowing how to uh, build up the sequence of rocks in a uh, uh, thick column of uh, rock at the same time these provenance techniques are also used in production stage because we uh, I, i will tell you afterwards as we progress in our lecture here for example they are used as a permeability variation permeability variation is nothing but a, it is nothing but a increasing value of permeability indicates that the increasing degree of vertical heterogeneity in a reservoir because as as the variability increases permeability uh, variation increases we come to know that it is heterogeneous and we do not look for such type of things the permeability variation hello ha ah, bol 
अनमिल कर दू अच्छा अच्छा जस, 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 अरे ऐसे कैसे हो रहा है हम्म क्या नहीं दिख रहा है फिर इसके लिए फिर से एक बार ओके शैलाई अगेन एंटर गुड गुड तो कर दिया उसे आ रहा भी आवाज आप अरे अच्छा ठीक है अच्छा स्लाइड पे अभी कुछ आ रहा है क्या अच्छा अभी दिखा अच्छा यहां से सब चेंज हो रहा है पता है स्टॉप शेयरिंग करें क्या पहले अच्छा ठीक 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 Yes, it's visible. It is visible now. Okay. So yes, shall I uh, shall I start from the beginning or uh, shall I? No, 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 no. From here only. Continue, please. Okay. Okay. So what I would like to tell that uh, I was carrying out the uh, my discussion for. Uh, can can you can you listen to it? Yes, yes. Hello? You are perfectly audible. No problem. Oh, okay. Okay. I uh, just I wanted to show in this a very small sketch rather sketch is very small but processes are very 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 humongous it is very very large one so what i wanted to show you here i have discussed that there are three types of rocks occurring in our uh, the whole system of earth they are sedimentary metamorphic and uh, mag, mag, uh, that igneous igneous types are are, are of three types rather plutonic that is you see this red thing uh, sitting inside as a Molten thing, and just above it is also <laughs> plutonic. And after that, there there are two forms uh, which come out to the surface also, which are exposed to the surface. One of them is intrusive, which comes out in the form of uh, dikes and sills, and the other one is extrusive, which comes out in the form of volcanoes and all all type of volcanoes. Then the cycle starts because of weathering agencies are doing their job. They are breaking down all those rock particles from one place to another and they are taking it to through uh, from one height to another lower heights and they are taking it to a basin through the water glacier even air or uh, there is a, another very very small uh, weathering and depositional system that is known as cast that is uh, that occurs only in limestone and dolomitic rocks so it goes into and then because of pressure and temperature condition it and diagenesis after diagenesis it changes into metamorphic rocks and metamorphic rocks because of anatectics and uh, they it it goes into again to a melting point and again becomes a part of magma so that way the whole whole cycle completes for the rock types okay provenance finds its maximum use in the study of sedimentary rocks and the aspects of a study there are four aspects of this study that uh, that is one of them is source of the particle which that makes up the rock the erosion and transport mechanism this is all we are when we study a provenance of some place we have to pass through these four aspects of it the source of the particle that makes up the rock the erosion and the transport mechanism that moves the particle from source area to depositional area 
and then the third one is depositional setting and depositional processes responsible for the sedimentation of particles then the fourth and the final one the physical and chemical conditions of the burial environment and the diagenetic changes that occurs in a siliclastic sediment siliclastic why i am using siliclastic word it is all clastic one with uh, which is not a chemical one uh, chemical uh, what i mean to say with chem uh, when i use the word this word chemical that is not it is not carbonates during burial and uplift in exploration stage for hydrocarbon provenance studies can enhance the study uh, understanding of reservoir distribution and reservoir quality this is very required thing when we carry out the study for um, we when we carry out uh, exploration for hydrocarbons these will affect the chance of success of exploration projects which you all you know all, already know that it is very uh, expensive exercise to carry out the exploration for even base metal and uh, all those metals even for hydrocarbons it is very costly affair so in the development stage the mineralogical and chemical techniques are widely used to estimate the reservoir zonation and correlation of the stratigraphy in the same at the same time these provenance techniques are also used for production stage which i will be telling you while i will carry on carry out my talk further for example they are used to access the permeability variation which i have just now told you permeability variation is nothing but a increasing value of permeability variation indicates that the if it is increasing in the vertical order then it means that uh, this reservoir is heterogeneous heterogeneous and um, permeability variation often ranges from 05.05 to 08 lower number may be observed for a relatively uniform reservoir that is the requirement for our um, hydrocarbon exploration at the same time these provenance studies are also used to in production stage for example they are used to access the permeability variation permeability variation is nothing but uh, that i have already told you and well declined rate it is also a very important part of uh, hydrocarbon exploration resulting from spatial variability the spatial variability is nothing but it occurs it is a just a uh, occurs when a quality that is measured at a different spatial locations exhibit values that differ across the location where we are carrying out the studies in diagenesis diagenesis also is also a is a is a process that describes the physical and chemical changes in the sediment it is simply accompanied by a reduction in porosity and water expulsion while their main mineralogical assemblages remain the same there is no sharp boundary between diagenesis and metamorphism but the latter occurs the i mean the metamorphism occurs at a higher temperature and pressure and depositional phases which i will tell you while i will be showing you on the further ahead the provenance method generally used can be sorted out into two categories which are petrological methods and geochemical methods petrological method includes the quartz feldspar and lithic fragment that is qfl ternary diagram heavy mineral assemblage apatite tourmaline index garnet zircon index clay mineral assemblage and elite crystalline crystallinity because you know elite is a is a metamorphosed form of clay and when the elite increases the uh, permeability and porosity of the reservoir also decreases so it is very important to keep on studying the uh, elite crystallinity of a reservoir reworked fossil and palynomorph which i will be telling you uh, uh, further because I, I i can just tell you here what is palynomorph palynomorph are the broadly defined as a organic walled micro fossils between Uh, five to five hundred micrometer size polymers are composed of organic matters such as chitin and pseudo chitin and sporopollen. The condition and identification of these particles, uh, organic or inorganic, also sometimes gives the pollen a palynologist clue to the life environment and the energetic condition that produce them. So it throws a light to a whole gambit of things. Yeah.
the providence method i have just told uh, ternary and uh, okay the example of geochemical method includes zircon uh, uranium lead dating plus uh, this is also a hee a higher uh, heavy earth element jo hai mm, hafnium haf hafnium isotope it is a very long um, half uh, life period so it gives a uh, it is not disturbed by any other things which take place in our mother earth due to tectonics and all those things zircon fission track apatite fission track bulk sediment and there also uh, two he uh, high uh, heavy uh, uh, element uh, rare earth elements that is neodymium and is sm that is samarium isotopes garnet chemistry pyroxene chemistry amphibole chemistry and so on sedimentary rock now we come to the sediment so some little bit about the sedimentary rock they are found by the loose sediment fragments or the detrital or the clastic sediment produced by the weathering of old rock almost 90 as we all know that 90% of earth crust is made up of igneous rocks but 75% of our land surface is covered by a thin veneer of sediments or sedimentary rock these sedimentary rocks are transported and deposited by river water wind or by the movement of glacier as i have already told you transportation is either by suspension or in solution when they settle down on the bed of ocean i that a small sketch which i have shown you can you can visualize that thing when they settle down in the bed of ocean river and lake undergo a compaction said cementation for millions of years to form a sedimentary rock so it is a very long process uh, to um, from a loose sediment to become a sedimentary rock sedimentary rocks are transported from higher elevation to lower elevation i have just i i, I want to just elaborate further source rocks and detritus are transported by gravity water wind or a glacier movement these process break rocks into smaller particle by physical abrasion from big boulder size into sand or even clay size the sediment can also be changed chemically it it takes place because of different ph and eh condition taking place in the medium where uh, when they are being carried out uh, carrying on uh, in the system or when they are deposited in the in a basin only mineral that are more resistant to chemical weathering can survive that those are very ultra stable minerals zircon tourmaline and rutile you must remember these three names they are the ultra stable uh, minerals and they hold key to so many uh, studies in uh, provenance but they have a negative side also which i will tell you at the, at the later at the end of the talk transportion leads to a sorting of mineral by their density and as a result light minerals like quartz and mica can move faster and further than the heavy mineral like zircon and tourmaline you can see from here the the alluvial uh how the alluvial is made uh, it it is it is the product of all this withering uh, which are withering material coming down to the a valley part and it is being deposited it may be a river course it may be in the valley due to gravity and and the crust i was just telling you uh, that these are the uh, underground tunnels and uh, some holes on the surface the aeolian deposit deposited by the Uh, wind action in the in a, a dry or a, a desertic condition then there are lagoons uh, a large large uh, lakes by the side of sea and then on the beach then deltic then uh, there are tidal movements which are sorting out all those things then evaporite also takes place when the it is exposed for a very long time to the air and open and like a strain type of deposit then Uh, on the uh, the shelf uh, you know it is uh, our uh, sea sea shore line uh, our sea shore line is depo- uh, divided into so many parts uh, the shelf part the continental margin then the slope and then abyss abyssal part then there are some reefs also so there are so many stages and places where different type of deposit of uh, sedimentary rocks are taking place Just a bit. Actually, uh, the animation is not working. Otherwise, I would show you all those things. 
transportation of sediment and formation of sedimentary rocks by mode of river deposit on the continent and the ocean is like this it is not working i, I know anyway here uh, whatever is taking place on the continental side is all fluvial deposit and whatever is taking place in a sea or in a marine it becomes a marine deposit uh, in, in a very nutshell which i want to tell you if you want to tell you importance of sedimentary rock and how the study is made the first and the foremost golden sentence for that is present is the key to the past if you know study in the present we can know we can rather conjecture or we can make out what would have taken place in the past also it helps our knowledge of the present helps in knowing the depositional environment uh, for example marine or ocean deposit fluvial or river deposit evelyn or wind deposit glacier or estuarian lacustrine lake that is lake deposit and also present studies also helps in knowing the provenance we also know how how the things would have moved in the past also when we see the present thing moving in the present that is the source of the sediment change in the climatic condition and knowing the understanding of the old climate that is the paleo climate because whatever rocks we find uh, we make out the their paleo climatic conditions now uh, in a nutshell i would like to move to the uh, sedimentary rock sedimentary rocks are of two types plastic rocks which is important for our uh, the discussion which i am carrying out here and the other is chemical or organic rocks plastic <clears throat> uh, rocks are sediment sand stone conglomerate breccia shale or mudstone it is according to the size of course conglomerate i, I should have put it above here the uh, sand stone comes just uh, the second one or the next one after that chemical or organic rocks are of uh, three types evaporitic rock which i have shown you in that uh, previous uh, sketch these rocks are formed due to the evaporation of saline water sea water which are exposed to the sun or air dry air for a long time and they uh, uh, they are left with uh, they give us the gypsum deposit halite and rock salt carbonate rocks form basically from caco2 both by the chemical leaching uh by the organic source that is biochemical or limestone or dolomite uh carbonateites also they they are the source of uh, giving the material to for the deposition of calcium carbonate in the sea water organic rocks are formed due to decomposition of organic remains uh, under the temperature and pressure conditions like coal and lignite etc no i i i told you that i i will limit my uh, discussion or other interaction with you to with to plastic rock these are formed by the broken rock fragments weathered and eroded by rivers glacier wind and sea wave as, as i have already told you these plastic sediments are found to be deposited on uh, flood plains beaches in deserts and on sea floor solidified to become a plastic rock plastic rocks are class classified on the basis of grain size and on the basis i just i have just i have told you that uh, conglomerate is the the largest grain size a uh, gravel that's grain size now we we are classifying them according to their grain size the gravel is 250 uh, more than two, uh, 256 less than 256 to 2 mm size the sand is 2 mm to 0. 062 that is uh, uh, 62 mu size or uh, and silt is uh, right from there where the sand ends uh, 0.062 to 004 mm size and clay is less than 0.004 mm size as i have told you here the, and the, from the this gravel the boulder is uh, more than uh, 256 size and uh, 64 to 256 is cobble and uh, lower than that is uh, pebble and below that is come the gravel and fine gravel after that now in a 
uh, rather a small section how you are going to uh, see uh, how the rock is formed what is the structure of this rock the, uh, this is a class uh, there are several class in this, this section and there is a matrix of a smaller a smaller material and these are uh, because they are occurring on the surface of rock terra the terrigenous rocks they are known as terrigenous rocks uh, now the further classify those matrix matrix is a fine grain rock or uh, fine grain material that is surrounded by a larger class it consists of either clay silt or sand cement because everything is to be bounded by something so there is a cement cement is dissolved substance that bounds the sediment it may be calcareous it may be siliceous sometimes it is ferruginous also the third part which i have not mentioned it here and class may be of any size which we can see here may be less than uh, 4 mm pebble size any rock fragment and fine gravel is more than 4 then comes the uh, roundness because how we know how much this uh, sediment has traveled so we uh, studied the, its uh, shape outer shape the degree of roundness helps in knowing the distance of transportation angular class short distance transport from the surface and rounded class uh, long distance so it start from the angular it has traveled very the valley is just near to the source where it is deposited then it may be angular thing after it if it has traveled a little bit it will become subangular and even if it has traveled is still farther it may be subrounded and rounded and then well rounded accordingly as it reaches to the ultimately to the sea side where the, the final deposition takes place in the big basin when clastic fragments are cemented to undergo a consolidate consolidation uh, the when the rounded one they are known as conglomerate and suppose there is a volcanic material or some uh, gravity because of some gravity rocks are broken and slide, slide down so they may become a breccia also because of some tectonic activity also the breccia forms then sorting is also a thing to be st uh, being studied in um, provenance because it gives a lot of clue to the our study of provenance sorting how the things are uh, sorted it, it has a very uh, different grades at least five are shown here long distance are well rounded and well sorted and short distance are poorly sorted and angular so you can see it is a very poorly sorted from there it has a well little poorly sorted then moderately sorted then well sorted and well sorted so this is our requirement to study a uh, reservoir sandstone is made up of sand grains dominantly of quartz and feldspar these quartz where quartz is highly resistive to withering cementation plays a similar role in this rock seen in, as in the conglomerate however siliceous sediments are best and highly desirable for a reservoir purpose for uh, after that the ferruginous sandstone comes <coughs> sorry about 60% of all petroleum reservoirs are sandstones outside the middle east which i want to tell you in middle east there there may be a different uh, rocks which are forming mostly it is carbonates but outside middle east you know uh, a very uh, funny thing is that uh, what uh, the amount of oil which are occurring in uh, middle east were occurring in the ohio river basin which uh, flows in the central part of uh, our north america but because of poor reservoir quality and capping rocks we don't find any oil there now sandstone provides a reservoir for oil and gas but also for the groundwater you know groundwater is also a very important thing for uh, humanity and population to be supported in any country or any that uh, social setup the properties of sandstone reservoirs are functions of primary composition we know that if a, it is a good reservoir it should have these parameters for it it is controlled by the textural and mineralogical composition mineralogical composition as we say it is provenance 
of the positional environment and the diagenetic processes near the surface and during the burial event. The terms refers to a specific grain size between 62 mu to 2 millimeter. As I have already told you while we were discussing about the sandstone qualities. <clears throat> the performance of a sandstone as a reservoir is described by combination of porosity and permeability, depending on the degree to which the sand dominates. If it, sand is more dominating, the permeability and porosity both will be better and which is better choice for the oil to get it reserved there or get it stored there. The favorable texture is depicted by packaging of similar size grains not a combination of coarse and fine grain. The favorable texture will be the same size if it is a sandstone is of same size uh, grains. The best sandstone reservoirs are those which are composed mainly of quartz grains of sand size of nearly equal size or silica with silica cement. With the minimal fragment particles, sandstone reservoirs are generally 25 meter thick. Here we, as I have told you, QFL diagram, uh, just to classify a sandstone, uh, we uh, create in our sedimentary studies, we classify uh, because on the study of the percentage of uh, quad content, quad uh, grain content, feldspar grain contents and rock grain contents. And as we proceed towards the more uh, towards uh, arcogic and uh, more lithic content is there, it goes into wake. We call it wakes, quad wakes, and arcogic wakes. And as the grain size decrease keeps on decreasing, it goes into up to mud. And on the basis of uh, the the source of uh, the said, uh, sandstone sediments, we can also classify uh, giving uh, uh, analyzing on VSM uh, ternary diagram also where sedimentary source, if, if one place is sedimentary, for one uh, uh, source is sedimentary, other is volcanic, and third is metamorphic. Okay? Different types of uh, uh, sandstone. I have given a, just a, uh, photographs of all those things. If it is a very pure type of sandstone, made of, of uh, only uh, silica, mostly of silica, then it will look like this. If it is arcosic, it will give like a picture like a, some uh, fine grained granite. Sometimes uh, a field geologists uh, get confused in identifying this type of rock. If it lithic contents are more, then it will look like a gray wake, gray wake. It, it really it looks like a gray rock. That's how the name has come. Then I have discussed you discussed with you about the permeability and porosity. So I just want to show you through this sketch how the permeability and can be explained in a sketch. Uh, here on the left side, you can see a, a magnified grain size of a rock, where is, which is non-porous and non-permeable, which is not desired for any um, reservoir. And, uh, here we see that it is not connected. You see, all these things are locked, so they are not permeable. Of course, they can store, but how the things will reach here, we don't know. So it is also not a required thing. And here on the rightmost side, you will find a, a sketch showing the grain size, where you see the spaces are there. So oil can migrate from any place to, to be stored here. So it is porous as well as permeable. So this type of uh, uh, rock is more suitable for a, becoming a good reservoir. Now I will give you an example of different types of sandstone, how the, their, their environment was and how they were deposited. Some depositional environment for sandstone. You see, this is a things which is which are taking place in a today's, uh, in, um, today's scenario when we go to our field and study through even walking there or through aerial photograph or sitting in an aircraft. And this is the thing which was deposited in the past. So that is that is how I told you the present hold the key to the past. 
now comes the second one is fluvial uh, uh, yeah deltic environment this is the delta of today if you see and this is how the delta have deposited in the past this thick sequence of sandstone of course there are some silt stones are also there in in between partings are there so this is the thing taking place today and this was the product which took place for the similar condition in the past this is a estuarine i have told you estuarine or barrier environment this is, this is a barrier and this is the thing which happened after uh, deposition and diagenesis in a basin this is the end product these are the sandstone made out of this type of environment this is a shelf environment this is a today's shelf the photograph of today's shelf and this is how the sandstones have deposited in that environment in past this is a desert environment you know you see uh, how the deserts are can be seen in a real photograph today or uh, how the things have been deposited in the past this is the sandstone deposited in that same environment which took place which we can find in today's uh, today's picture also in today's situation also we find that sort of thing now you see the, you cannot have a aerial photograph of tur turbites turbidites so turbidites are nothing but on a continent itself when the sediments are falling down they take uh, some catapulting type of things takes place as i have shown you in the sketch and some some uh, some photograph to depict this catapulting and all those deposition and now how, how the things would have this type of things would be, would be producing things which which it were produced in the past now i come to the last one that is the shale shales are the clastic rock made up of mainly fine silt and clay they are most abundant sedimentary rocks account for 80% of them 80% of our sedimentary rocks are made up of shales only they often contain fossil and because of fossil we can make out uh, the age their provenance and so many things they can, we can make out most hydrous aluminous silicate composition most of them are hy hydrous aluminous silicate from the from the weathered feldspar deposition take deposition takes place under low fluvial regime in a very calm and cool uh, environment under weak water currents offshore or in a lagoon but due to surface tension phenomena of water and, and extremely fine irregular spaces shales are impermeable so hence they are not a good reservoir they cannot form a good reservoir or rather they cannot form a reservoir but they are very good to form a trap rock covering rock or holding rock or the the type of utensil where the things are kept and not moving out anywhere kept safe and now i will give you example of uh, these are the big example of uh, detritus accumulation take uh, in the world known world over known losses deposit in the china in a losses uh, Uh, yeah, in the China Plateau. If you, somebody wants to study, he can study. He or she can study the detritus apatite deposit. This is a which denotes a, a environment deposition condition of uh, continental margin, which we find in East uh, Greenland margin. Detritus zinc in uh, zircon in uh, modern river, uh, Red River, also in uh, China. heavy mineral accretionary complexes in alaska we find this type of deposit again detrital zircon in ancient passive continental margin south lhasa again now a part of china detritus detrital zircon foreland basin nepal himalaya very close to our country and even in between our country and china no again i will come to this word provenance where something has originated provenance is a sediment of a sediment is inferred from aspect of composition 
that reflect the source rock and the tectonic climate and climatic characteristic of source area for the sediment. Tectonic. Now I will take one by one the tectonic uh, setting and the climate. Okay. The source rock of a sediment and tectonic setting are closely linked. The tectonic setting determines the relative abundance of different types of rock that are available for weathering and production of clastic rock, clastic sediments. A archaic sediment, uh, archaic sandstone rich in feldspars, would have a source in a rich granite. And you know where these granites are occurring. So, if it is we are getting lot of archaic sandstone, we can make out uh, the source and how the uh, tectons have moved in which direction to give uh, this, uh, provide the source for these archaic rocks. Then the climate climate exerts a strong control on the type of weathering that takes place in the source area of a sediment. This in turn influences the composition. Cold and arid climate, predominantly physical feathering, producing abundant detrital grains, unaltered mineral grains and rock fragments. So this will not be providing a this will not be providing a ideal source for a sandstone, which we look for uh, our uh, study for hydrocarbons. Sandstone produce produced in a such setting will relatively immature depending on the source rocks. Now I will show you uh, three graphs which are all similar and the conditions may be different but because of this uh, situation they give the same type of rock. Warm humid climate, chemical weathering produces uh, predominates, the unstable mineral removed from the sediment and the produced by the weathering will produce a more mature sediment than a cold climate. Here is the plot. I will show you uh, another example. It is from the USA. Source rocks in the north, as you know, uh, um, more toward the uh, 90, I mean, the toward the polar end, it's moving from there. Uh, height, is, height is also from there only. Those places are places at a uh, higher elevation. So they are moving. So now here what we find, feldspar are more in the, uh, that, that granitic part. And as we move toward the south, we keep on uh, losing those uh, feldspars. Similar things take place. The colder in the north will have a physical weathering is important, producing immature sediment. Many sediments are produced during glaciation, which only breaks down source rock by physical processes. Warm in south, so the chemical weathering processes produce a more mature sediment. Here, sediments have become more mature as we move towards uh, equ equator part. I mean. Yeah. Transport distance also matters. The south has many rivers that transported uh, sediment over a long distance, increasing the maturity of sand. Example, Colorado River, Rio Grande, Mississippi River, so all these places. Important characteristic of sandstone reservoirs. The quality of initial sandstone reservoir is a function of source area of material, the depositional processes, and the environment in which the deposition took place. The sandstone reservoirs are generally 25 meter thick, are lenticular and linear, especially in space, I mean the distribution in space, and less than two, uh, 250 square kilometer in area. Generally, the ideal one which I am talking of here. They range in age from old, oldest being Cambrian in Algeria and the youngest being Pliocene in Caspian a, a region of Ukraine. In the USA, two thirds of the sandstone reservoirs are in Cenozoic area age. One of the most important practical economic application of heavy mineral provenance is the correlation of sandstone that holds the reserve results of oil and gas. You know why I am uh, now uh, bringing you up to this heavy mineral part? Because it holds uh, a key to a place where we do not find other um, means to carry out this study. Correlation is one of the key components required to build a petroleum reservoir model because it places fundamental constraints on the understanding of the reservoir architecture. 
Correlation of reserve wire sandstone is therefore crucial for optimizing recovery of our ever decreasing supply of hydrocarbons. Heavy mineral correlation belongs to one of the many methods. That is what I wanted to bring it to you. To you. At places where the other are less applicable. This is one of those tools which work where other tools are not applicable. It is one of the one of a family of a provenance based tools that also includes chemo stratigraphy, chemical stratigraphy. And that is, I have told you, SM, ND, I have already told you in the beginning, isotope stratigraphy and clay mineralogy stratigraphy, I have told you in the beginning. The said method is especially well suited to the application of hydrocarbon industry because it deals with the individual particle. That is very important part of it. It deals with the individual particle that it that is that is constituted in the sample rather than the attributes of the bulk sample which we find in uh, other uh, methods uh, for studying the provenance the successful correlation scheme depend on the recognition of changes in sediment provenance and the transport history in the interval under investigation interest because you know interest in the application of heavy mineral analysis for hydrocarbon Reservoir stratigraphy was rekindled. It, it started in the 1920s and up to 40s. It was, uh, it, it had a rather, it also ran into the race. It was not a winner, but it was also running in the race to uh, understand the provenance of the uh, sediments. But after 1980, it, it was re, it re established itself into a prime position. It is partly because the increased understanding of heavy mineral behavior during the diagenesis of the subsurface and could be regarded as a reliable provenance indicator in highly diagenetically modified sandstones. You know, it, now because I will tell you further when I go through my this discussion. With the development in the micro micro beam is a is a special kind of technical study being carried out to uh, for the analytic, analytical techniques leading to a geochemical character, characterization of major stable or ultra stable heavy min, uh, mineral component such as garnet and tourmaline. Major advances in micro beam analysis techniques are because you know uh, what we do we uh, place this uh, sample on a platform and a small platform and pass through uh, raise through it and it gives a spectrum and by studying the spectrum we decipher the uh, uh, mineral assemblies there and even study the condition of the element with through which condition it has passed through so there are spectrum methods are of many type the ele electron probe micro -pro analyzer the raman spectroscopy the fourier transport in uh, transform infrared spectrometry the synchron synchrotron uh, radiation x-ray microscope probe and more advanced one is the laser ablation quadruple multi collateral mass spectroscopy and so many other uh, 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 spectroscopy of course this one is the latest one the nano one huh? then we, uh, uh, there is another branch which uh, technique branch of technique which carries out the studies through electron micro, uh, microscopy method that is a transmission electron microscope and I have given how much their reach, reach is there and how the spatial resolution is there and how much detection uh, range is for each one of them giving this a um, in this diagram. At the same time, textual studies uh, at the same time, the textual studies of individual stable heavy mineral component notably apatite, tourmaline, and zircon showed that the variations in these parameters could be used for the correlation purpose of purposes in biostratigraphically barren hydrocarbon bearing reservoir. We find so many horizons where we do not find biostratigraphically very well um, present there. So in those cases, it becomes even more important to carry out our uh, study of uh, provenance through uh, study of uh, these heavy mineralist um, minerals components, such as in uh, Devonian and Triassic period. More recently, the continued development in analytical uh, techniques 
have increased the scope for application of single grain geochemistry, uh, geochemistry that is what i have told you for evaluation of the change in provenance including trace element data from diagen diagenetically stable phases such as apatite and rutile and lead uh, uranium isotope data from the multi stable phases as zircon this is what i wanted to give you just a quickly i will pass through it this is a uh, just to show the global detrital uh, data zircon pool age distribution here i would like to uh, come to the uh, the final part for instance the peak in uh, about, about the 0.6 to 0.7 giga annum and uh, 2.7 giga annum figure may correlate the breakup of rhodania and super continent Uh, Canora land, respectively. So when we uh, uh, keep on studying all these uh, graphs of uh, global abundance of uh, zircon, we come to know that how the continents have broke, how the um, sea floor has uh, spread. All those studies can be carried out through them. This is our present position of uh, distribution of oil fields across the globe. and this is how i wanted to give you along with that this is this is a minuscule <laughs> sketch which i have blown up here this is how the reservoir is there in a, uh, looks like this is reservoir scale on uh, large scale if you see and the microscopic scale you can see that how permeable and um, this permeability porosity is occurring here so that is what i have shown you just before what is the take away of my presentation here provenance study is which qualify under petrological studies of geological sciences of uh, sedimentary rocks which i have not added it here but it is there is one of the important tool application essentially to to the search for the petroleum or hydrocarbon its role in even is even more magnified as it is now armed with the new techniques which i have just told you in my previous slides and its utility has become more significant as the easily available and close to the surface petroleum fields have already depleted leaving deep seated and blind fields to be discovered now so the why we are talking up about all the provenance and all those studies because now we have to search in a very troubled water or a very difficult water for those fishes which are till now which are hidden from us and we don't know where to get them now i will tell you a small trivia here submarine fans i am talking of a present holds the key to the past submarine fan is known as abyssal fan the bay of bengal fan is known as bengal fan is also a ganga fan and world's largest abyssal fan and also known as a deep sea fan underwater delta and submarine fan the fan is about 3000 km long something very enormous size 1,405-430 kilometer wide with maximum thickness of 16.5 kilometer. The fan resulted from the uplift and erosion of the Himalayas and Tibet Plateau, produced by the collision between the. Uh, whatever I have talked to you just before, just I wanted to give you a picture of that through uh, a, a study carried out by the carried out by a, a, a study group, which I think many of maybe you may be knowing also. that was the international ocean discovery program it is started from 1960 till uh, and in 19 uh, uh, 2014 and 15 it carried out a deep drilling project in uh, our bay of bengal so most of the sediment is supplied by ganga and brahmaputra river system the turbidity current has transported the sediment through the series of submarine canyons some of which are as you see the size 2400 km in length to be deposited in a bay of bengal up to 30 degree latitude from where it began from the tibet and all those places to date the oldest sediment recovered from the bay, Beng bay of bengal is early miocene that means 2 20000 million years ago also the himalaya was supplying the material to our uh, this um, bay of bengal the mineralogical and geochemical characteristic allow to identify their himalayan origin and it demonstrate that the himalaya was already a major mountain some 20 million years ago 
the fan completely covers the floor of Bay, Bay of Bengal. It is bordered to the west by continent slope of the East India, to the north by the continent slope of Bangladesh, and to the east by uh, by the north northern part of Sunda, Trench of Myanmar, and the Andaman Island. The accretionary wedge, which I have talked to you just before, associated with the subduction of Indo-Australian plate beneath the Sunda plate. The fan is now being explored as a possible source of fossil fuel for the surrounding developing nations. This is what I wanted to present. Thank you so much for being with me and listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uke and so many of my younger friends who are listening to my talk. Thank you, Tariq. Thank you very much, sir. It was a very nice uh, lecture. Yeah, Actually, no, we will learn a lot more regarding the sediment transport and the origin. Mm -hmm. uh, I received a couple of questions. Okay. Fact, uh, more than that. Uh, but okay. I will uh, post you Please. some major questions. Yes. I mean, the very first thing that everyone wanted to know is about uh, how exactly provenance has significance in uh, hydrocarbons. Actually, you know, I have told you that uh, uh, now the days of, uh, because it is a tool, is it? it is a Emerging as a major tool because there are so many tools to go for the search of hydrocarbons. So we know most of the things we already know, uh, which is, which are being used in uh, maximum uh, for maximum exploration purpose. They are being like our uh, geo uh, geophysical methods and uh, aerial methods, aerial geophysical methods, ground geophysical methods, and so many other methods like biostratigraphy study. And so many other things are being studied. But provenance becomes a very important when we come to a place where these methods are not possible or, or, or they are very cost prohibitive. Or because I would not have gone for this uh, provenance because at, at the before 1980, there were uh, techniques were very old and it was all by recognizing things on uh, by seeing by your own eyes. So you needed a lot of expert. Now with the advent of so many technologies and so many um, uh, these uh, electron microscope and uh, spectrometry, you can identify even each grain, and each grain can tell you a study how the uh, grain, uh, how the segments have moved from which source, and at what time of that plate movement they have come, uh, they have come and being uh, uh, being deposited to a place where now you look for a. Mm, suitable right. condition to have a hydrocarbon deposit. Right, right, exactly. And moreover, moreover, they are also helping you in uh, in the correlation of hydrocarbon reservoirs, which are located at so many different places, but they are depleting, and now you don't know how to correlate all of them. Whether the depletion of one place will be similar to the depletion of other place, or it will be different. Right. So exactly. the study of these uh, provenance uh, provenance uh, based uh, minerals will uh, help you in identifying such type of uh, exactly, horizons exactly. Similarly, also correlating them. We have heavy minerals. Yes. Right, and okay. you know, I, I have not discussed uh, one very uh, uh, negative point because you know, the, 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 when something has a very strong positive point, it has a, some negative points also. So, so you know, this is, these are ultra stable uh, uh, minerals are indestructible. So mm. what sometimes what uh, problem they generate is that they may be originated from some primary source. They were deposited at some other place, but again, they were eroded from there and again deposited some to some other place. So yes. what they will tell you, they will tell you the uh, the origin from the primary source. Right. You will be confused. You will not be knowing the, the secondary source, how it, it was taking place there. Right. And how, right. So it's it, it could be confused with in situ conditions. Yeah, yeah. So there is a, some pitfall also for this study. That is yeah. what I wanted to tell you. Exactly. Anyway, otherwise, it is a very uh, good um, source, and you know, a lot of money is there, uh, uh, which are being spent for the uh, for carrying out the study for right, hydrocarbon. Right, right. As I, I actually, since I have worked in uh, paleo climate, I know mm -hmm. that it has very much, uh, you know, a, a good significance in paleo climate. Yes, yes. There we yes. need to have the provenance of clay minerals. Right, right, right. right. Okay. So uh, next question is. Uh, yes. What about the sedimentary depositional environments 
mm-hmm. how those could be used uh, if we want to have you know a better exploration strategy you know uh, we, as i have told you in the i think i have shown you some slides here uh, you know i will come to this because you know uh, sedimentary deposition and environment right from here to uh, you know uh, uh, first thing is that deposition and environment tell you if it is coming from a uh, you see uh, if uh, sediments are deposited in a, or rather being uh, eroded and carried out in a in a, a cold climate most of the fells path and all those things will not be converted into clay right and they and they will not be uh, separated from there so you know you know what you are looking for of course not in the area of uh, middle east where the most of the reservoirs are made out of uh, uh, calcareous rocks or carbonates or uh, dolomites other places where the sediments uh, this uh, sand, uh, sandstones are holding uh, 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 rocks as uh, holding rocks of uh, reservoirs we need a uh, sediment uh, sandstone which is composed of uh, mostly of uh, uh, silica and if if best suitable suitable will be if it is completely made up out of uh, sedimentary cementation also so right. in that condition uh, we want to know the what type of climate would have prevailed uh, for the uh, making this sandstone available here so if it has traveled a lot of distance the clay part would have been separated the feldspar would have been converted into clay the most of the decaying things also must have been uh, and rounding also because you know permeability and porosity is also very important uh, plays a very important role in a reservoir right so if it has traveled a lot the uh, the grain size and all those place things uh, have sorted so well that they are the most they become most suitable for a for becoming a good reservoir exactly. so these are the things these are the things which we look for right right uh, so mostly uh, i combined all those questions which students had asked me yes, yes. so i think uh, i mean they might have satisfied by these answers because you no you of course of course if they have some specific question they can uh, post me on my uh, email address yes exactly i will, I will send you i will send you yeah. yeah definitely i will be uh, it will be most welcome your, your lecture was explain self explanatory i mean uh, so far provenance or sedimentary is uh, are concerned i think uh, many questions have got answers so okay. on behalf of the petroleum engineering department parul university parul institute of technology i i whole heartedly thank you for coming here and giving us a very nice lecture for the thank students you. they might have enjoyed very well and they might have gathered in of knowledge so okay. uh, i thank you very much and thank you hope to see you in future as well yeah of course i will be looking for such opportunities which I, which i actually i am enhancing my knowledge also through you people <laughs> only yes knowledge gathering no. is never yeah. never stops yeah yeah learning never stops at any yes. stage of your life so exactly. that is the best part of it that is the best yes, part exactly. of it. thank you so much and thank you for bearing me for this lecture and to my young friends and to you also for giving me this opportunity to give me thank you very much thank you so thank you. thank you bye 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 bye